ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM FM listing, plus ESPN Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contracts. Did you see it? Did you see it last night? Did you see that absolute show that Kyrie Irving put on in Boston? He was absolutely sensational, ladies and gentlemen. It was something impressive to behold. In a big-time game against the Toronto Raptors, Widely recognized as the team to beat in the Eastern Conference this year. Kyrie Irving and the Boston Celtics hosted the Toronto Raptors and Kawhi Leonard last night at TD Bank Garden in Boston. Kawhi Leonard dropped 33 points on 19 shots. Didn't matter. Serge Ibaka chipped in 22 and 10. Didn't matter. Guys like Norman Powell. And Greg Monroe came off the bench and made a contribution. Didn't matter. Danny Green hit three of eight threes, finished with 15 points. Didn't matter. And it didn't matter because we saw something special unfold before our very eyes last night. Kyrie Irving had 27 points and 18 assists. I'm going to forgive him for those seven turnovers. It happens. The ball handling skills, the ability to get to the basket, Being a box office attraction that he is. Dancing on people the way that few rarely can do. He was an absolute showstopper. Make no mistake about it. Al Horford chipping in 24 points. That was impressive. Hitting three of his four shots from threes. Jason Tatum contributing 16 points. That was impressive. Gordon Haywood giving you 18 off the bench. That was impressive. Jalen Brown, I still want to see more. He's too good for getting seven points. That's just me. But I'm just saying, when I look at the Boston Celtics, obviously they're my pick to come out of the East this year, although that pick was made with a bit of trepidation because I know the Toronto Raptors are no joke. I cannot forget about the Milwaukee Bucks because the Greek freak right now is number two in league MVPs, the league MVP honors list. Number two to James Harden, who's unquestionably number one, particularly after dropping 58 last night in a loss to those Brooklyn Nets I told y'all about yesterday. But back to Boston. Kyrie is something special. Kyrie is one of those dudes, ladies and gentlemen, you walk through the turnstiles to see. You walk through the turnstiles to see him. If you love basketball, if you marvel at individual exploits, a ball handling skill, the way somebody can dance on somebody. If you love and one, if you fantasize about Rutgers Park or West 4th Street or anything like that in Chicago and L.A. and New York and every place in between, you know what I'm talking about. Kyrie Irving is something special. There's just simply no way around it. He's that gifted. He's that skilled. The one thing that no one, however, would accuse him of being in possession of would be humility until last night. And by the way, that's not a knock. I've always loved Kyrie Irving. But last night, he did something. Last night, he did something a little bit different. Unsolicited, not being asked, nothing like that going on. Kyrie Irving brought up LeBron James' name. And for those of you who don't know the story, Kyrie Irving wanted out of Cleveland. Didn't want to be LeBron James' teammate anymore. Didn't want to be in Cleveland. Not only did he not want to wait around for LeBron James to hold the Cavs franchise hostage by being indecisive about or non-committal, matter, non-committal rather, about where he wanted to be, whether or not he was going to stay in Cleveland. It was also a situation where Kyrie Irving didn't want to be the little brother to LeBron James, the big brother. He was Kobe, not Shaq, and he wasn't trying to hear that. He wanted to emulate Kobe in every way. That means severing ties with LeBron James, like Kobe severed ties with Shaq. That's what Kyrie Irving wanted to do, and he wanted out. And the impression was given 
upon his departure, they didn't want to be that guy. Did he consult with LeBron? No. Did he call LeBron to give LeBron a heads up that he wanted out of Cleveland? No. When he came on my show, first take on ESPN, upon his departure to Boston, he said, what do I need to call LeBron for? It's not necessary. It's not like I need his permission. This is what Kyrie Irving did. And so it was kind of shocking to hear this from him in the aftermath of last night's victory over the Toronto Raptors. Listen to Kyrie Irving. You know, I apologize for being that young player that wanted to everything at his you know, at his fingertips, and I wanted everything to uh, be at you know my threshold. I wanted to be the guy that led us to championship. I wanted to be the leader. I wanted to be all that, and you know, the responsibility of being the best player in the world and leading a team is something that's not meant for many people. And Brown was one of those guys that came to Cleveland and tried to show us what it's like to win a championship, and it was hard for him. Sometimes getting the most out of the group, it's not the easy, easiest thing in the world. And um, like I said, only fewer are meant for it or chosen for it. And, you know, I feel like the best person to call was him because, you know, he's been in this situation. You heard him? It was Kyrie Irving. Unsolicited, brought up LeBron James' name, said he called LeBron James and apologized because he didn't quite understand what LeBron James was doing when LeBron James was trying to lead them to championships. He didn't quite understand. He didn't quite appreciate it. Now, just to give you some backdrop, LeBron James is the best player in the world when healthy. LeBron James is an individual that is the biggest iconic brand, arguably, in the entire world of sports. That includes Ronaldo, Tiger, and everything in between. That's how large LeBron James is in the eyes of some people. And because he's that large, there's a certain level of treatment that comes with that. There's LeBron treatment, and then there's everybody else around him, which was hard for somebody like Kyrie Irving to take. But the reason why you saw Kyrie Irving speak up the way that he did last night is because Kyrie Irving finds himself in a leadership role with the Boston Celtics. He's a champion. He knows what it takes to capture a championship. Not only did he witness it firsthand, he helped accomplish it firsthand. See that jump over Steph Curry to seal the deal. LeBron James was somebody that called that play. LeBron James was somebody that said, okay, give it to this brother in this particular situation to close the deal. That's the right way to go. Steph Curry's hobbled, can't defend the way he customarily can. He's not 100%. Kyrie's nasty. He could take advantage of Steph Curry even if he was healthy. Let him do it. That's what you're talking about there. And so Kyrie Irving evidently reminisced about all of that. And in the throes of situations with the Boston Celtics this year that, dare we say, are a bit uncomfortable, where the winning has not been as continuous as one suspected it would be, where you're having a multitude of team meetings and player-only meetings without the coach Brad Stevens, where mistakes are made on the court and you're calling out guys like a Jason Tatum or even a coach like Brad Stevens, where Jalen Brown gets interviewed post-game And after a loss to Brooklyn, and he's talking about how the guys just have to stick together and there shouldn't be any pointing of fingers, and we got to be beyond that and what have you, forcing Kyrie Irving to take a step back and reflect upon about how he might choose to handle things because everybody doesn't receive it the same. Then he goes on the court last night, puts a dagger in the Toronto Raptors with that 20, like 28 foot three. From beyond the free throw line, beyond the arc, over Kawhi Leonard, I might add. Kyrie Irving shows up post game and essentially says, Here, I understand now. I understand. Now, I've always been somebody that defended Kyrie because I think that he has a right to have that attitude. He had a right to sit up there and say, Look, I want more than what I'm getting here in Cleveland. But there is no doubt that shade was thrown in the direction of LeBron James. Because I know for me personally, and I've said this on national television, you're damn right I'm looking at LeBron. Because if you're the star and people don't want to play with you, that's a problem. That's a problem. 
And I'm not going to completely absolve anybody from that when you are the superstar. You've got to ingratiate yourself with guys enough where they want to be around you. They want to be teammates with you. They want to go to war with you. They want to win with you. They don't mind losing with you. All of those things matter. But you know what Kyrie's words meant last night? Maybe a lot of us were too hard on LeBron James. That would include me. I pride myself in being fair, ladies and gentlemen. I ain't interested in the pomp and circumstances or maintaining a position because it's good TV or radio or whatever. I don't give a damn about any of that. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. I tell you what I believe and feel based on the evidence accorded to me. But I'll tell you this. When Kyrie said that last night, I found myself looking at LeBron a little bit differently. I found myself looking like looking at LeBron like he was somewhat of a victim. You got the world thrusted on your shoulders. You've answered the challenge. You know what you're going for. You went back to Cleveland to erase a, a curse that spanned a half century. And after 52-year drought of a championship in any sport in the city of Cleveland, you were the one that ended that drought. The Browns couldn't win. The Cavs couldn't win. The Indians couldn't win. Hell, for all we know, your minor league team couldn't win. But still in all, you go back and you erase the curse that had plagued that area and brought a championship to it. That's what you did, LeBron James. And in order to do that, you needed help from guys. And you had to bring guys along. Could you have done things a little bit differently? I'm sure nobody's perfect. But when Kyrie said what he said yesterday, it highlighted for me as a reminder of how difficult it is to lead, how difficult it is to galvanize troops, how difficult it is to get everybody to be on the same page and to do the things that need to be done so we can all flourish. That's what Kyrie Irving is saying LeBron James did for him. Now, it might be self-serving because, as my man Max Kellerman pointed out this morning on First Take, 10 a.m. to noon Eastern time, 7 to 9 a.m. Pacific. He said, hey, it's definitely self-serving to some degree because Kyrie's probably saying to his teammates, look, what I'm acknowledging about LeBron, one day you'll find yourself acknowledging about me if you're smart enough to listen to what I'm trying to tell you because I'm trying to win a chip. And as we're on this subject, let's go a step further. And ask ourselves, why the urgency? Of course, it's the middle of the season. Of course, every season counts. Of course, tomorrow is not promised. All of those things are true. But here's the reason why. If you're Kyrie Irving, not only are you trying to win a championship because you won a championship, you might be trying to win a championship now because you might be leaving. Because you remember what Kyrie Irving said to those fans in Boston prior to the season? I would love to stay here, and I'm looking forward to having a long, prosperous career here. I'm paraphrasing. A long, prosperous career here, if you will have me. What does that mean, ladies and gentlemen? You know what that means. If you're going to give me the max, I'm here. If you're not, maybe not. Boston Celtics got Terry Rozier. We saw what he did in the playoffs last year. They got Marcus Smart. They got Jason Tatum. They got Al Horford. Now Gordon Hayward's back healthy. You're the Boston Celtics. As much of a showman as Kyrie Irving is, as spectacular as he is, the reality of the situation is, do you give him that money? Or do you let him walk away and position yourself to get Anthony Davis? Or better yet, do you wait until this summer when somehow you could package? You just never know. If you're the Boston Celtics, anything's up for grabs. This is Danny Ainge we're talking about here. I mean, this is a guy that just pulled off the heist against Brian Colangelo. When he sat up there and convinced Colangelo that he would want Markel Fultz when he knew there was no way in hell he would want Markel Fultz, Colangelo wanted Markel Fultz. So what did he do? Sixers got the number three overall pick. Your GM, your president of basketball operations, Brian Colangelo, decides to trade two spots up. Switch picks, flop picks, 
from three to one, giving Boston a third overall pick so he could get Markel Fultz. But Danny Ainge also got a first round pick from Brian Colangelo out of that. And Markel Fultz at this moment in time may end up going down as the biggest number one overall bust in history. I mean, I'm talking about a disaster of epic proportions. Epic. I mean, worse than Kwame Brown. Or Michael Olawa Candy. Or Anthony Bennett. I'm talking some of the most disastrous number one overall picks in NBA history. Markel Fultz might end up eclipsing them all. Now, the brother can play. The brother can play. Markel Fultz is no scrub. I don't know what the hell happened to his jump shot. I mean, it's like a hitch. It's worse than Charles Barkley golfing. The hitch is that damn bad. But having said all of that, what makes it considerably worse is the fact that the brother's got psychological issues. Whatever's going on inside of his head has so drastically affected his game. He's impotent offensively. He has nothing to offer. It is an unmitigated disaster. That is Markel Fultz's situation. And it's sad because him being ready to ball is exactly what the Sixers would need to truly, truly challenge in the Eastern Conference. Joel Embiid is a superstar in the making. Ben Simmons is a jump shot away from being LeBron James part two. J.J. Reddick can ball. Can flat out ball. By the way, I want to be on the record stating this. I think J.J. Reddick's underpaid. I think J.J. Reddick is underpaid. I'm going to tell you that right now. I look at J.J. Reddick. I watch him shoot the basketball. I see how much the Sixers desperately need that shooting. And the fact that he's the one reliable person that can give it to them. And I say to myself, damn. He was getting paid $23 million last year. He signs a deal for $12.250 million for this season. And then, you know, obviously he comes off the books. J.J. Reddick's worth more than that. In today's NBA economy, J.J. Reddick and his ability to shoot the basketball, particularly coming off screens and picks and what have you, I think J.J. Reddick is worth a minimum of $17, $18 million per year. A minimum. He's that good of a shooter. He's that good. And he's a consummate professional. You can rely on him. So I think those are the things that you got to look at. I mean, we know what TJ McConnell can do. I'm proud of that little brother. Little energizer bunny. By the way, he's at 1.6 million. Grossly underpaid. Little small dude in the NBA. Little energizer bunny. Beats you with effort, et cetera, et cetera. Smart, knows how to play the game. Trusted by Coach Brett Brown. Shows up in the postseason. T.J. McConnell should be paid more than that, too. So Sixers got two guys that are underpaid. But Markel Fultz, if he was giving you anything, the Sixers would be more formidable. That's not the case. So it's about Boston. It's about Milwaukee. It's about Toronto. Which makes Kyrie Irving's statement that much more profound. And as a result, I think Boston's going to be better for it. I think Kyrie's going to be better for that. Kyrie plays games like this. If Kyrie going to give you 12, 13, 14 assists, 18, some games like he did last night, look out, y'all. Boston's coming. Boston's coming. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. One of the other things I wanted to get into was James Harden. Y'all are excited about a second game. He's had over 50. Um was it like 20th consecutive game he's had over 30? He's averaging over 40 over the last 18 to 20 games. James Harden is the most unstoppable offensive player in basketball. He's the most unstoppable offensive player in basketball. But I'm here to tell you it's not a good thing. Because if James Harden keeps going at this pace, he's going to have nothing left come postseason time. Boy, I hope Chris Paul is ready. Because I said it before and I'm going to say it again. And you are listening, ladies and gentlemen, to somebody who loves himself some Chris Paul. 
Chris Paul is one of the great, great point guards of this generation. As far as I'm concerned, he is a future Hall of Famer. Just an, an outstanding point guard. What, what you want and what you need from a point guard, what he does on both ends of the court is just phenomenal. Just phenomenal when healthy. Here's the problem. He usually gets hurt at the wrong and most inopportune of times. And I do say this with all due respect. Chris Paul was wrong to take every cent of the max that he took four years, $160 million from Daryl Morey and the Houston Rockets. This is the first year that Chris Paul is in. He's already missed 17, 18 games. We don't know when he's going to come back, how healthy he's going to be. And I'm here to tell you something right now. If Chris Paul takes about $2 million less per year, guess what? Trevor Ariza stays in Houston. Trevor Ariza went to Phoenix, who's now in Washington, by the way, with the Wizards. Trevor Ariza went to Phoenix on a one-year deal for $15 million. I got news for you. If Trevor Ariza... If the Houston Rockets had offered Trevor 12, he would have stayed. And they could have offered him that if Chris Paul had taken less. He did it. He wanted his money. And I guess you can understand that because money's money A and B when you pass up about $205 million to $207 million from Steve Ballmer and the Los Angeles Clippers. When you pass up that amount of money to walk away and go to play with James Harden, you walk away from Doc Rivers. I got news for you. That's a problem. So Chris Paul's got to come back. And you want me to tell you how Houston must be feeling? Houston, let's call it what it is. They don't give a damn what Chris Paul thinks right now. I'm going to tell you why. Did you consult with him when you decided to let go of Melo? No. Oh, by the way, did you consult with him when you brought Austin Rivers on the team? Austin Rivers. I like Austin Rivers. Chris Paul did it, according to reports. He didn't like he like Austin Rivers. Let me take that back, calling reports. I'm telling you, he didn't like Austin Rivers. Why the problem he had with Doc Rivers and Austin Rivers with the Clippers. When that was that altercation in the locker room and stuff like that. That was about Austin Rivers and, and Chris Paul trying to go at it. And the Houston Rockets brought Austin Rivers there when Chris Paul went down anyway. What that says to me is Chris Paul got to get healthy. Chris Paul got to, has to get back on the court, and he's got to help James Harden, which I have no doubt he will do. Chris Paul healthy. Houston Rockets is going to be there. I think the only team standing in their way would be Golden State. The problem is I don't think he'll stay healthy, and I hope I'm wrong because I don't root against him. I got love for Chris Paul, but not as much love for him as I got for his family. Wonderful, wonderful family. His brother CJ's good people. His dad and his mom love the Paul family. They're phenomenal. Love him. Just saw his dad at the Cowboys-Rams uh, game. Gave him a big hug. Love Mr. Paul. He's the real deal. But Chris Paul, if he's healthy, he ain't healthy, he ain't healthy. There's nothing he can do about that. But if he's healthy, he's got to show out. Because if he doesn't, you can't ask James Harden to handle all of this by himself and expect a championship from that. That's not right. He's only human. I don't know how much more James Harden could do. I really don't. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 That was Straight Talk Wireless. Nationwide coverage of America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. When you're hiring, you don't want to waste time sorting through dozens of irrelevant resumes, do you? You want an efficient way to get to a short list of qualified candidates. That's why you need Indeed.com. Post a job in minutes, set up screening questions based on your job requirements. Then zero in on qualified candidates using an intuitive online dashboard. Discover why 3 million businesses use Indeed for hiring. Post a job today at Indeed.com slash hire. Search for greatness. Search Indeed. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Back with your calls. And more to discuss in a minute. With Vivid Seats app, it's easy to find awesome seats to any game. And all purchases are backed by their 100% guarantee. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. One pick shy of being able to light, to have Steph Curry to light up Madison Square Garden. One pick. That's it. One pick. And it could have been special. 
and they weren't able to get Steph Curry. Steph Curry. And this is an interesting article on ESPN.com by Kirk Goldsberry. He's an ESPN staff writer. Wrote a very, very interesting article. You know what? And he was highlighting this. There's a difference between threes and deep threes. Deep threes are threes between 30 and 35 feet. Now remember, you're talking 19-9 in the NBA. So three-pointers, you're talking about 20 feet, 22 feet, 23 feet? No, I said deep threes. Steph Curry... Between 30 and 35 feet. The NBA makes 35% of its threes overall and 22% from between 30 and 35 feet. Steph Curry shoots 54% from threes between 30 and 35 feet. 54%. That means... More than one out of every two shots he takes from that distance, he makes. Over four, over the past four plus years, Curry has made 48% of his threes from 30 to 35 feet. Do you understand what that is? Do you understand how great that is? I mean, this dude is unreal. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Ow! Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio. This is presented by Progressive Insurance, protecting commercial vehicles and offering specialized coverages designed to protect your business. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. There's a fight that's taking place this uh, Saturday night. Um, obviously, we got a tremendous UFC card for ESPN at the Barclays Center. Uh, TJ uh, Dillashaw going up against Henry Cejudo, uh for the um, Flyweight Championship, 125 pounds. So it's going to be real interesting to see what happens with that. Um and then there's a boxing match that's taking place on a HBO pay-per-view Saturday as well. Manny Pacquiao going up against Adrian Broner, the welterweight crown. Uh, Adrian Broner, obviously in the news for a lot of the wrong reasons uh, in recent years, trying to resurrect his career. Um, and he's going up against the Pac-Man himself. Obviously, Pac-Man is a senator in the Philippines, also one of the great, great fighters we've ever seen. Um, is on a mission uh, to take Brona out, try to unify the welterweight belts, all of that kind of stuff. So it's going to be real interesting to see what happens in that regard. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Let's go to the phones. Let's go <clears throat> to Canelo. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, how you doing, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Go ahead, man. Hey, Stephen A., I got a uh, question about the Celtics. I'm a Celtics fan, and uh, – I'm kind of confused, man, because we've got a good roster, but it's not showing. So from your point of view, if you were the uh, the manager of the team, what changes would you make as far as the roster or the lineup? I don't think anything, any changes need to be in the roster. I think from a lineup perspective, you leave Marcus Martin in there, you make sure you keep Gordon Haywood coming off the bench. And other than that, I, I think you gotta you, you got to elevate the play of Jalen Brown. That's what you got to do right now. He's struggling. He's been struggling this year. Jason Tatum has struggled periodically as well. Um, I just think both of those guys really, really have to step up and play like they played in the playoffs in order for the Celtics to be who we expected them to be coming into this season. That's where I'm at with that. What about I want A.B. on the team? What play? Uh, you're talking about Anthony Davis? 
Yes. Well, let me tell you something. Anthony Davis is one of the top three players on the planet Earth. If I'm giving, if I'm the Pelicans and I'm giving up Anthony Davis, I want Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. I want them both. And by the way, add Terry Rozier in the mix as well. Oh my God, no. There you go. I mean, if you're talking about if you're talking about Anthony Davis, you have to understand what how big time he is. And I don't know if you can take all of that risk unless he's going to commit to resigning with you. Because if he doesn't commit to resigning with you, the chances are you're going to do all of that just to chase the title now, and then after next season, he's free to go wherever he wants. That's problematic. I want to. Can I give up Horford and Hayward and keep Tatum? Can I ask you a question? Tatum? Can I ask you a question? Yes. Would you take Horford and Haywood for Anthony Davis? Man, I don't know. Have a nice day. You know the answer. You don't get to lie on the Stephen A. Smith show. You, you damn well know the answer. The answer would be an emphatic no. That is not enough for Anthony Davis, period. Let's go. Today, you're live with Stephen A. Stephen What's up? A. How you doing, Stephen A.? I'm good. What's up? So, um, I want to know what you think about James Harden as far as scoring. Do you think he's an efficient scorer? The do I think – hold on, I mean, hold on, time, 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 time. Did you just ask the question, do I think James Harden is an, offic- is, 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 is an, is an efficient scorer? Is that what you just asked me? Yes, sir. Uh, tell me why I shouldn't hang up on you. <laughs> tell me why I shouldn't do just that. Just look at his – listen, from his game last night, right, he shot five – from 19 from three. He shot 21 or 23 from the free throw line, which is great, but I feel like he's forcing the score rather than Well, duh! Do you see who he's playing with? CP3 is not there. (laughs) Click Capella is not there. What is he supposed to do? I get that. I get that. I just want to know if you think he was efficient or not. Are you talking about efficient? The man is the greatest scorer in the game. He can go to the free throw line anytime he wants. He's got one of the nastiest handles in the game. You can't stop from getting to the basket. He's shooting threes. He's getting to the hole at will. He gets to the free throw line at will. He's averaging 40 over 18, 19 games. Balling. I ain't hating on the man. I just, just yeah, no, you're not hating. How could you ask this question? What do you know about basketball? Ask that question. I can understand you asking about James Harden's overall game. You asked about his ability to score. Do you see a better offensive player in the NBA right now? I'm talking about in terms of putting the ball in the hole. How many people can you name that are better than James Harden? Who? None. None. Have a nice day, man. You annoyed me. You annoyed me. This is is, is an idiotic question. It's unbelievable. Do y'all have any idea how great this brother is? I mean, James Harden is so great as an offensive player, he doesn't even get laughed at for coming into the game with a pink suit on. That's how great he is. He can walk up. He can walk in one day. With a pink suit, another day with a lime green suit on, looking like looking like the Joker. Another day he got on some bizarre stuff that blinds the eyes. It doesn't matter. He's James freaking Harden. This is the reigning league MVP, y'all. Who has had to go out there and deal with life following Chris Paul. And since that time, allow me to throw some numbers at you. Since December 8th, he's dropped 35, 29, 50, 32, 47, 35, 35, 39, 41, 45, 41, 43, 44, 38, 32, 42, 43, 38, 57, and 58. Do you understand what you're witnessing? I mean, just the disrespect, the lack of appreciation for this brother is blasphemous. It's just flat out blasphemous. I ain't calling James Harden the greatest all around player because I know he struggles defensively from time to time. Primarily due to effort because he got to do every damn thing offensively. But what you are witnessing from this man 
is unlike anything we have seen. You should be ashamed of yourself for even asking the damn question. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. By the way, if you missed my opening segment today, don't worry about it. You can listen to the podcast on your schedule on demand. Brought to you by the new Capital One Saver Card. Earn 4% cash back on dining and entertainment, 2% at grocery stores, and 1% on all other purchases. Hey, hey! What's in your wallet? 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News with you. For the next hour and change, reminding you that start of hour number two, Adrian Broner challenging Manny Pacquiao for the welterweight crown. He will be online with yours truly. Top of the two o'clock hour. Stick around. Don't touch that dial. You listen live, Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Whether it's a monthly challenge to meet your goals, a training program for your next race, or setting a new personal best, the Peloton bike will make you want to show up. Ladies and gentlemen, I love Steve Mills. Known him for many years. Scott Perry for many years. I got a lot of faith in, in what the Knicks ultimately will do if they stay at the helm. But I got to give credit where credit is due. I cannot say enough about what the Brooklyn Nets are doing. I cannot say enough about what the Brooklyn Nets are doing. It's, it's fantastic. I don't give a damn about them being a game of two under 500. That means nothing to me. You go against the Brooklyn Nets, you are going to be in a dogfight. I want to give props to D'Angelo Russell because we all know what kind of mess he got himself in by stupidly exposing Swaggy P when he was involved with Iggy Azalea. That brother needed to be moved out to L.A. All of us said it. He has come to Brooklyn. He has been balling. This kid, Allen, will block anything. He'll block a burger if you throw it in his face. He don't give a damn. He's trying to swat everything. Dinwiddie can ball. I like him a lot. I I love what I'm seeing from the Brooklyn Nets. I'm sorry. I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. Native New Yorker. Born in the Bronx, raised in Hollis, Queens, New York City. All my life. I I, I, I wasn't sitting there looking for the Brooklyn Nets. But I'll be damned if I rob them of credit. I am incredibly impressed with what I am seeing from the Brooklyn Nets. This was a team that was supposed to stink every bit as much as the Knicks until this summer's free agency where you got cap space, not just for one, but maybe two marquee dudes. And everybody been talking about the Knicks, 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 because the Knicks are supposed to have $38 million in cap space. Let me tell you something. Do not be surprised if a marquee dude decides to go to Brooklyn. They're building something there. They're building something there. The hell with the rest of the NBA. The Knicks got a problem right here in New York with the Brooklyn Nets. 22% as a league. Do you know what Steph Curry has shot for, or, 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 you know, recently from 30 to 35 feet this season? Do you know what he's hitting? 54%. Do you know what he's done with that deep 330 to 35 feet, Martez, over the last four years? 48%. He, you can't make this up, man. You can't make this up. You got people that can't make layups at 48% clip. This juice shoot from 30 to 35 feet at a 48% clip. He's the greatest shooter I have ever seen in my life. Like uh, last night, he had, man, he had like two guys draped on him, and he was hitting them all that splash. Like it was something like unworldly, Stephen. A., when it, when when he when he is on, he just lets it go. He can literally run down court without even looking. He just throw it up and just run down court. I mean, it's just that lethal, man. He's that. Great of a shooter. He is the greatest shooter I have ever seen. He's number three on the list right now because he just passed Jason Terry with threes. It took Jason Terry fourteen hundred plus games to do it. It took, or, or, you know, it took Steph Curry six sixty something like that. And then you've got only Reggie Miller and Ray Allen are ahead of him on the list. He's catching them. And oh, by the way, make no mistake about it. They, they as great as they were, they were never this kind of shooter. Not this dude. Of course not. Not this. Okay, I got one question. I got one question for Hurry you. Hurry up. Go I'm ahead. Go. Where do you do you think he'll he'll catch 
Reggie Miller and Ray Allen in the next uh, two to three years? I don't know. It depends. I got to look at the numbers, and then I can give you a definitive answer in terms of comparing what he does yearly to uh, how much fur- how much further he's back. I'll get those numbers for you in hour number two, and I'll answer that question. But there's no doubt that Steph Curry will retire as the number one three point shooter in NBA history. You can book that. And for those of you out there, you do understand already that Steph Curry right now in his 10th year in the league with at least six to seven more years to go, you do understand that Steph Curry is is going to the Hall of Fame. It's already decided. It's already decided. He will go down as the greatest shooter the game of basketball has ever seen in our lives. And a surefire first ballot Hall of Famer without question. Without question. There's nothing to discuss. There's nothing to discuss. Which is why I'm not worried about Golden State. DeMarcus Boogie Cousins coming back and all this. Don't make no damn difference. They're going to win anyway. It might be none with Steph Curry playing like this. Can't happen. He's that great. Greatest shooter I've ever seen in my life. Adrian Broner challenging Manny Pacquiao for the WBA crown this Saturday night. He's up next. Hour number two, Stephen A. in the house. With Vivid Seats app, it's easy to find awesome seats to any game, and all purchases are backed by their 100% guarantee. Go to the App Store or Google Play and download the app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off. He's 776. Welcome back to the Stephen A. Smith Show. We're coming to you live from the Seaport District at Pier 17 South Street Seaport. It's being brought to you by Chase. Also, get triple action protection for optimal engine performance with Shell V-Power Nitro plus premium gasoline. Any minute now, we'll have on... The challenger uh, for the WBA welterweight crown this Saturday night um, at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Adrian Broner will be set to go up against Manny Pacquiao. We're waiting for him to come on the line right now. He's training. He's training. So, you know, I, I, I'm i very, very particular with boxes from the standpoint. I don't like messing with any routines. I don't like messing with anybody. Listen, in the sport of boxing, Along with MMA, UFC style, people got a license to assault you. Okay? So guess what? You got to let them be who they are. You got to let them do what they do. And you got to take them any way you can get them. Anyway, so if you if you hear Adrian Broner, I heard he was on the treadmill running. So if he's on the treadmill running and he, I'm interviewing him on the treadmill, I don't give a damn. As long as y'all can hear him clearly, it don't matter to me. Whatever it takes. You understand? I hope he don't he don't cuss me out like he did Al Bernstein. Okay, the nice. I mean, uh, of course, he might go off on me. It doesn't get much nicer than Al Bernstein. Okay, been a consummate professional covering the sport of boxing for many many years, by the way. But anything's possible. Listen, when you're about to fight, you got to be in that kind of mode. You got to be in that kind of mood. You can't be about the business of friendships. Got to do what you got to do. So I totally understand that. Make no mistake about it. By the way, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance, making it easy to bundle your home and your car insurance. Plus, with the Vivid Seats app, it's easy to find awesome seats to any game. Download the app and enter promo code CHAMPS at checkout to get 10% off your first order. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Whenever Adrian Broner is available to come on the show, I will be happy to put him on. He's um 33 and 4. That is his record, 33-3, and three, I'm sorry, with one draw. Uh, he has never been knocked out. He did get put down by Marcos Madonna, but he got up. He lost that fight. That was um, that was back in December of 2013. Lost to Sean Porter in 2015, June of 2015. Lost to Mikey Garcia in July of 2017. Um, majority draw against Jesse Vargas last April. So Adrian Broner, I mean, in terms of him potentially being a marquee, this fight is incredibly important to him. He loses this fight. He'll probably fall off the map. He wins this fight. It'll be a big deal. First of all, he'll hold one of the belts. And secondly, and more importantly, it will put him in line to face some of the elite dudes in the division. I don't know whether it's a rematch with Sean Porter, whether it's a match against Danny Garcia, whether it's a shot against Keith Thurman, whether it's him going against Errol Spence Jr., who's my favorite in the welterweight division. There could be potentially a lot of options for Adrian Broner because if he wins this fight, he's a champion. 
So let's keep that in mind. Champion that, uh, a belt that Manny Pacquiao took from Jeff Horn. Not from Jeff Horn, I apologize. Uh, but I just, he just, he just won. I'm sorry. I was, somebody was in my ear, ladies and gentlemen. I got a bit distracted. My apologies. Uh, Adrian Brona wants to come on at approximately 30 minutes past the hour. That's fine. Uh, hopefully uh, he'll be ready to go at that particular uh, uh, day and time. By the way, uh, I, I didn't say Jeff Horn because uh, Pacquiao got robbed of the decision that Jeff Horn lost that, but ended up winning that TKO against Lucas Matisse. Uh, Matisse. Matisse. Um, so Pacquiao won that fight. He's got the WBA belt. And as a result, now uh, he's going to uh, defend it against Adrian Broner, who will be on with us 30 minutes past the hour. Until then, uh, we'll get back to the phones at 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. But before I do that, Scotty Pippen. I don't know. I think he was on the jump. Is that right, Kat? Was he on the jump? Yes, he was on the jump with uh, Rachel Nichols, who, by the way, did a great job interviewing Boogie Cousins uh, as well. She always does a great job. Um, Scotty Pippen was speaking about Zion Williamson of Duke. And he said something that got my attention, and I just can't avoid talking about it. I have to address it. I'm not doing my job if I chose to to ignore this. Um, So let me just get right into it. Please play what Scottie Pippen said about Zion Williamson, please. Definitely going to be the number one pick. I mean, I I think he's done enough for basketball, college basketball, that it's, it's, it's more about him personally personally now and I think for him as a young player that I would shut it down now would, let me let me you, would, you would stop playing let me I ask would, you this though I would, Scotty I would stop playing because I I feel that he could risk a major injury that could really hurt his career football players are doing it yeah. why not the college football players are skipping the bowl games and they're getting ready for the combine if I was him I know I'm that's it at least if I'm top Zion, three NBA pick I'm out of here it's time to shut it down That was Tracy McGrady in the background talking to Rachel Nichols as well. I know that voice. Scottie Pippen and Tracy McGrady should be ashamed of themselves. Ashamed of themselves. Now, I say that affectionately because I got love for both brothers. Scottie Pippen's a six-time world champion. Okay? Michael Jordan doesn't win six chips without Scottie Pippen. The great Scottie Pippen. I usually am deferential. And Tracy McGrady, that's my brother. Love him dearly. Okay, but they know me. I can get on them affectionately and still have love for them. How can you say that? Especially you, Scotty Pippen. You can't say that. Tracy McGrady, you can't say that. I have no problem with them saying Zion Williamson out of Duke, who is elite big time in the whole nine. I have no problem with them saying that if you're talking about a season before it starts, you can't encourage a kid to ignore his team and quit in the middle of a damn season when you are in pursuit of a national championship because you want to get the pro money. If Zion Williamson had decided as a high schooler that he was coming to the NBA, he would have been a first-round pick. He might not have gone number one overall, but he definitely would have been a high first-round pick in in, in last year's NBA draft. You can't encourage a kid. You can't talk about a team. You can't talk about chemistry. You can't talk about the importance of being one unit, like-minded, with the agenda of capturing championships and then turn around and encourage a kid in the middle of the season to quit. You can't do that. You can't do that. If Zion Williamson had not played yet and they were saying sit out, that's different. What Scottie Pippen said, he shut it down. Like now, Zion Williamson is not hurt. Zion Williamson has been on the court bowling. The only injury he's had was a poke in the eye. That's it. You're telling me that a kid that is healthy is ready to play ball whenever Duke's next game is? Because I don't have their schedule in front of me. A dude that's averaging better than 20, a dude that just finished dropping 35 and a loss to Syracuse the other night. Playing for Duke, which was ranked number one in the nation at the time, which is clearly in pursuit of a national championship. 
You're trying to tell me that a champion, a six-time champion who understands what team is all about and a Hall of Famer like Tracy McGrady would literally sit up there and encourage a dude to just walk away from the team and quit in the middle of the season? In the middle of the season. I don't understand this. I mean, great, great job on the jump. You said something that's gotten folks' attention. And we always appreciate Rachel Nichols bringing folks on that'll do that. But thank the Heavenly Father that I wasn't in studio with Tracy McGrady and Scottie Pippen when they said that. They might have they decided to take the jump off the air with the stuff I might have said to those brothers. My brothers. Love them both. But you can't do that. You can't do that. Not in the middle of the season. Completely healthy. Nothing wrong with them physically. Balling. Ready to go. And you would encourage him to just walk away and quit on his team to ensure he doesn't get injured? When there's nothing wrong with him? A champion six times over, one of the 50 greatest players to ever play the game, one of the greatest defensive players we've ever seen in the history of basketball, being co-signed by a Hall of Famer and one of the prolific players when healthy we had ever seen in the game. And Tracy McGrady would co-sign a dude quitting on his team in the middle of the season? You can't do that. You can't do that. I can't believe Scottie Pippen and Tracy McGrady said that. Or Scottie Pippen said it and Tracy McGrady co-signed it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Walter, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey, I'm disappointed in you, man. Yesterday what? you said you didn't give the Nets enough credit. And today's show, you didn't even mention the Nets winning against Houston. I did mention them on first take, and I brought them up at the top of my show. That's a lie. Okay, let me finish. No, 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 no. You don't get to finish lies. That's not true. I mentioned them on first take, and I mentioned them on radio near the top of the show today. That's false. But you didn't talk about Dimwitty hitting the three-pointers to bring them back out of regulation. Th- that's not the point. I mentioned the Brooklyn Nets and how much better I thought they were than I thought they would be at the beginning of this season. I mentioned Harden dropping 58, but Brooklyn beat them. And Brooklyn's a damn good team that's going to make some noise. Watch out for them. That's what I said. Individually, you didn't say anything oh, so, about so, 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 in other words, you want to edit my show and tell me what I'm supposed to do individually? Did I not mention Dinwiddie yesterday? Did um, I not mention him last week? Three shots like Steph Curry did. He so, was- do it continuously. It's not about the three shots like Steph Curry does. It's that Steph Curry has made a career of doing this. Let's see what kind of career Spencer Dinwiddie has. I understand that, but I'm talking about specifically that. Man, make, man, 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 make another point. Don't tell me what to do on my radio show. I'll say what the hell I want to say, how I want to say it, and I will include and omit what I want. But I did mention them. What's your other point? I'm just saying, I just hope you give more credit to the individuals on the Nets. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye. You're going to call me a more individual. I sat up here. What show in America do you see talking about the Brooklyn Nets? I spent damn near a half hour on them yesterday. Shut the hell up. You just wanted to call up and whine so you could go back and say to folks, I called up to see this radio show to whine. Ah, shut up. Let's go to the next caller. Eddie, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen A. Um, thank you for taking the call. Yep, go um, ahead. Just calling to see uh, what you think about possibly Kyrie Irving going to play with LeBron in L.A. Uh, I think it's highly unlikely, but still possible. Uh, all right, and then um, uh, my second question for you is... Uh, do you think there's any possibility that uh, Jalen Hurts possibly wins a Heisman over two of this year? No. 
I don't think that Jalen Hurts is a good thrower. I'm very proud of what I saw him do against Georgia. I know he was working hard during the season on his mechanics and improving upon that. Um, I think he has tremendous potential. He's a tremendous athlete. Um, I think Oklahoma is going to win some games with him behind center. No question about it. But I don't think he's a thrower of the football that Tua is. And so I don't see that happening, no. All righty, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to um, Darius. You're live with Stephen A. Talk to me, Darius. Hey, Stephen. Long time listener, first time caller. I'm just yeah. going with uh, Trace McGrady and Scotty Pippen. I agree with that. Because look at the other sports like golf and tennis and hockey. Those folks are going pro at 15, 16, 17. Stop right there. Stop, 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 stop. See, you misconstruing my point. You don't listen. What I said was, it's no problem with their suggestion at the beginning of a season before anybody's played. I'm saying if you're in the middle of a season, you've been a part of the lineup, you're not injured, and you're just going to say, all right, I'm quitting on the team while in pursuit of a national championship. You can't do that. You got, you got injured. You got injured. Then you don't want to come back and risk further injury. That makes sense. Or you don't want to risk injury at all, so you refuse to play at all this season. That's different. But once the coach has inserted you into the lineup and he's game-planned with you in mind and he's determined his rotation and all the other things that come with it, you can't just quit on a team in the middle of a season when you're 100% healthy. You can't do that. Fortunately, Kelly Bryant did that with Clemson. No, he did not. No, he did not. Dabo Sweeney made the decision to go with Trevor Lawrence and recognize that he had to make the decision at the time that he had to make the decision because you were talking about eligibility issues with Kelly Bryant. And so as a result, not wanting to compromise the kid in any way, you made a decision when you had to make a decision to do what was best for your program and to preserve the eligibility for Kelly Bryant. That wasn't Kelly Bryant quitting on the team. Kelly Bryant had been demoted. He wasn't playing. Zion Williams is a starter and a key component of the Duke Blue Devils in pursuit of a national championship. You can't compare the two. Okay, fair enough. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Let's go to Joe. You're live with Stephen A. Stephen A. Yes, I'm here. You're live on the air. Go ahead. How you doing, man? Uh, big, big fan of the show, man. Thank you. Go ahead. All right, man. I, I really wanted to call you about the Broncos, but I, I, that, that Zion Williams, you ain't talking about Joey Bosa. About who? Joey Bosa? Yeah. Uh, what about Joey him? Bosa. He took the whole year off. Say what? Nick Bosa. You talk about Nick Bosa. I'm sorry, Nick Bosa. That's right. Yeah, but what, I, but, but, but what I'm saying to you is this. Didn't you just say the whole year? Well, no, he took what? He, 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 he played like what, the first two games? No, 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 no. You don't understand what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, you're talking about the player. I'm talking about champions and Hall of Famers suggesting that the player should just quit. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. See how y'all look, look, look. What's my name, brother? Who y'all think y'all playing with? I know what I say. I know what I say. I know, and I stand by what I say. I'm not talking about Zion Williamson. I'm talking about champions like Scottie Pippen, Hall of Famers like Tracy McGrady, suggesting they should. If Zion I mean, Williamson, if Zion Williamson wants to quit on this team to make sure he preserves his health. So he can get his money. All right, to each his own. You got your own family issues. Only you know what they are. I respect that. But a champion and a Hall of Famer can't suggest it's what you should do in the middle of the season. What do you mean? What about Kyrie? What about him? He took the year off. Oh, my God. Are you having a difficult time comprehending English? I specifically just said I'm not talking about the player. I'm talking about someone suggesting the players should. Okay, okay, I get what you're saying. Anyway, I'm talking look. about I'm talking about a chance. Scotty Pippen said he should. Tracy McGrady said he should. That's different than Kyrie or Zion or somebody actually doing it. That's their life. But you as a commentator, a pundit, who played the sport, who won championships, who understand what's required, who understands what comes with greatness. You would suggest he should quit in the middle of the season? You can't talk about team no more then. Think about this. Let me put it to you this way. And we all, listen, 
It's all fun because I love Scottie Pippen. He's a good brother and a great champion. And we don't, I don't even want to tell y'all how close I am with Tracy McGrady. That's my man. So are we just talking basketball? Ain't nothing but love for them. But let me break it down to you this way. Joe, think I, about it like this. Think about it like this. Scottie Pippen could say Zion Williamson should quit, right? And just go pro and preserve himself to go pro, right? In the middle of the season. How could he say anything about any player being dysfunctional if you okay that? Ain't that the way, ain't that the, way the game right now, Steve? No, no it, isn't. No, it, tell, no, it isn't. Tell me when a commentator suggested somebody should quit in the middle of the season. No. Scott, nobody does that. Nobody does that. You get hurt, you might not come back because it's too risky because you ain't 100% healthy and you got hurt. Or before the season, you make a decision not to come. But you ain't 100% healthy, dropping 35 in a college basketball game, ducking on everybody every chance you get, being 100% healthy, and just say, you know what, I don't feel like playing no more. The hell with the national championship pursuit. I'm going to chill out and wait for the NBA draft. Who's done that? Who? Nobody's done Nobody. That's all I'm saying. Come on, man. You know better than that. You can't condone that. If you condone it, you can never say anything about anybody else. Uh, uh, I always wanted to call about John Elway, man. Why Hurry is up. everybody? What about? Why is everybody? Everybody's on Jerry Jones, right? Everybody say he shouldn't be the GM. John Elway then failed over and over. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. John Elway has not done a good job as of late. Ever since Peyton Manning left, they've done nothing. But who got Peyton Manning to come to Denver? As a late, as a late. Tell me, tell me, who got paid man to come to work with me here? Just answer the question. I don't need the, the, the peanut gallery, the extra the extra stuff. Just answer the question. Who got paid man to come to Denver? Of course, John Elway. Did. Okay. Did they win a Super Bowl when he got here? Yes. All right. When's the last time the Cowboys won a Super Bowl? What you talking about, the Cowboys? <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. You said everybody getting on somebody else. Jerry Jones. You brought up Jerry Jones. When's the last time the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl? Right, you know, 25 years uh, ago. And how many playoff games did they win in the last 25 years? Well, guess the last time we had two losing seasons. Time out. Answer my question. When's the last time the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl? And how many, play, and how many playoff wins do they have in, 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 in the last 25 years? Three. All right, here's one other question. How many wins in a postseason does it take to win a Super Bowl? Uh, at least three. Uh, well, at least, least so no, three, at least three, three, at least three. So there's at least three wins that you have. So what I'm trying to say to you is, in one year of winning the Super Bowl and another year of going to the Super Bowl when they lost to Seattle, that's at least five playoff victories. That's still two more than Jerry Jones had in the last 25 years. Why are you bringing John Elway's name up in the same sentence as Jerry Jones? This is only claim to the fame. Huh? Everybody else is a failure. Brock Osweiler. Paxton Lynch, right, right. Trevor yeah. I, 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 I No, no, I agree. I, I agree with you that John Elway has struggled. All I'm getting on you about is for mentioning him in the same breath as Jerry Jones. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Have a nice day. Edit 8, 8 say ESPN. It's 8 8 7 2 9 3 7 7 6. Looks up. Uh, listen. 30 minutes past the hour, Adrian Broner in pursuit of the WBA crown against uh, Manny Pacquiao. This Saturday night at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. He'll be on the show with us, so he says. We hope that he will be. Until then, it's Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, gentlemen, stop lounging around. Be active. Take your girl out. Go to a game or a concert. Get tickets to something. Plus, the playoffs are upon us, and the time is now to jump on those tickets. For all your ticket needs, look no further than Vivid Seats, the official ticket partner of ESPN. Go to VividSeats.com and enter promo code ESPN to get 10% off your first order. Get out. Go have an experience, fellas. Get to the game and use what I use. It's Vivid Seats. Once again, Adrian Broner up next. Don't touch that dial. Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Craving even more of Stephen A.? (laughs) One pick shot of being able to light, to have Steph Curry to light up Madison Square Garden. One pick. That's it. One pick. And it could have been special. And they weren't able to get Steph Curry. Steph Curry. And this is an interesting article on ESPN.com by Kirk Goldsberry. 
He's an ESPN staff writer. Wrote a very, very interesting article. You know what? And he was highlighting this. There's a difference between threes and deep threes. Deep threes are threes between 30 and 35 feet. Now remember, you're talking 19-9 in the NBA. So three-pointers, you're talking about 20 feet, 22 feet, 23 feet. No, I said deep threes. Steph Curry, between 30 and 35 feet. The NBA makes 35% of its threes overall and 22% from between 30 and 35 feet. Steph Curry shoots 54% from threes between 30 and 35 feet. 54%. That means more than one out of every two shots he takes from that distance, he makes. Over four, over the past four plus years, Curry has made 48% of his threes from 30 to 35 feet. Do you understand what that is? Do you understand how great that is? I mean, this dude is unreal. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. Saturday night, January 19th, the UFC debuts on ESPN Plus with a true super fight. Champion versus champion. Bantamweight title holder T.J. Dillashaw drops to the flyweight division to face the king of the 125-pound division, Henry Cejudo. Live on ESPN Plus at 10 p.m. Eastern. Coverage of the prelim starts on ESPN at 8 p.m. Eastern, by the way. Start your free trial of ESPN Plus today. All right, download the ESPN app to get the best of UFC on ESPN Plus. Um, I'm hoping my next guest there challenging Manny Pacquiao for the WBA welterweight crown. Wondering why you ain't here? Oh, let me tell you why I'm there. Uh, let me tell you why I'm not there because they got me working, bro. I got I got to work radio. I got to work television. I listen as as much as I love boxing. I don't get to get to too many fights. I've been to two Floyd fights my entire career. I went to a heavyweight match uh, with Wilder and uh, no, no, Fury. You know I'm gonna call you out. You know I'm gonna call you out on your, book, <laughs> on your BS. I gotta call you out on your BS. No. If Floyd was fighting, you would be here. That's not true. That's not true. It depends on who he's fighting. Because let me tell you something. The Andre Berto and a bunch of others, there's plenty of fights that I didn't show up for Floyd. That's not true. I swear to you, it's not true. I and know, by the, but and I'm, by I'm the, saying, so what, you, so, what, so what are you saying? This is not a big fight? Well, you know what? You know what? I'm going to tell you this, Adrian. Since, since, you, since we want to talk and you like interviewing me, I don't mind answering these questions. I actually love it. Let me tell you yeah. something. I think I, I, I actually want you to win this fight, man. I want you. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. I wanted since, you to be here. I didn't have to bring your name up um, yesterday. Oh, I, I brought pre- your name up because you wasn't there. Oh, and I, I thought bringing your name up was going to make you, I, you know like, what? all right, I'm going to go there and I'm going to interview that man at first. I do. Let me tell you something. I, I let me. T- can I can I make a range with this? You win this fight. Where you want me to come to interview you? How about that? How about that? Because Adrian oh, Bruno. You know what? We going to win. It, and I'm and I'm coming to LA and we're gonna do it there. No no problem. It's not a problem for me. I ain't got no problems with that, Adrian Bruno. I mean we take the show most of the time. We do the show live rather most of the time in New York, but sometimes we do it in LA. But I'm gonna ask you this question. You ready for this fight? Are you ready to take out Manny Pacquiao? Is the elephant heavy? Yes it is. All Keep right, talking. Then, that your question. No, that's not that's not answering my question because Adrian, when 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 we look at you, listen, 
You listen, you're 33 and 3 for crying out loud. You've never been knocked out. Give you mad credit for that. But the three losses, see, one could argue you shouldn't have lost any of those fights. You shouldn't have lost to Mikey Garcia. You shouldn't have lost to Marcos Madonna. You could beat those guys. So there's been questions. For sure. All right, so so why did you lose those fights and why should we believe you're gonna beat Pacquiao this Saturday night? Um, I'll answer those questions when we do a personal interview. Oh Lord. There we go. There right we go. Now, right go now ahead. I'm focused on Manny Pacquiao and I will beat Manny Pacquiao Saturday night. How and, you gonna beat him? You know, for those other questions. I'll answer those questions up close and personal. That's, that's fair. That's fair. I can understand that. Tell me why you're going to beat Manny. So let's stick to Manny Pacquiao then, all right? Why are you going to beat yeah. Manny Pacquiao Saturday night? Why? Because honestly, he's just not a better fighter than me. He's not He's not blessed with what, what, what I'm God gifted with. And um, everybody know 100% Adrian Bronner is undefeated, stays undefeated. But um, I'm not mad about, you know, my losses. You know, um, they made me who I am today. So... You know, Saturday night, that will be another turn to my chapter in my book, and I will be taking over the sport of boxing. Now, are you a different Adrian Broner? Is this somebody that's just ready for this fight, or are you a new man? You've been through a lot, and I'm not going to chronicle all of that. We only got a minimal amount of time, and we'll save that for that face-to-face when we have that one day in the near future. But are you a different Adrian Broner, period, or is it just going to be a different fighter that shows up Saturday night? Oh, no, no, no. This, this is a serious AB, and AB going to stay serious, man. It's, like I said before, it's, it's, it's the second half of my career. If I don't do it, nobody going to do it. Um, if I don't help myself, nobody going to help me. So, you know, i got to make this happen. Now, we had enough plan. We, we did enough plan in our career. You know, it's time to fight. Serious question in all seriousness, man, because, because obviously I'm hoping that you're well, but here's the deal. You know, there, there, there were stories with, that was talking about how you was in such a depressed state that you contemplate, and, and they, they point to tweets crying out loud. This is, this is months ago, obviously, where you actually contemplated committing suicide because of the, the folks walking away from you, folks not believing in you, folks abandoning ship after a loss here or there. You know, uh, obviously some of the legal troubles that you got into. Are you beyond all of that? Are you totally ready? And that stuff is in the past, and you're in a better place today more so than ever before. Absolutely. And um, I think it will show January 19th. Like I said before, after the fight, I'm, going, I'm definitely coming to get the win. I'm going to get the win. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get the victory. And, and then I got to meet up with you. I don't care if you at your, your, your friend house, your best friend house, we're going to do the interview. All right, that's no problem. But let me ask you this also, because when people talking about you in the latest fights, they're saying you don't throw enough punches. You do understand this is Manny Pacquiao you're going against. You're going to have to throw punches to win this fight, Adrian. It ain't about throwing a lot of punches. It's about throwing the right punches. And we've seen we've seen that plenty of times. You know, he got plenty of losses. He got more losses than me. So so we're not going to just make it seem like I'm fighting I'm fighting God, the person who don't make mistakes. Right. <laughs> we're, we're fighting Manny Pacquiao, the person who got knocked out three times, flatline every time. Um, um, he got multiple losses. I mean, it, it, it's not a, it's not a mystery that he can lose. Well, I definitely think Manny Pacquiao could lose, and I definitely, particularly considering the counterpuncher that you are, I definitely think that you got a damn great shot. My issue is, is that, again, if you're not throwing enough punches, and let's say, for example, it goes to the scorecards, you might find yourself on the short end of the stick again just because you wasn't active enough and the judges don't give you enough points. They've said that about you and losses in a couple of fights, that you just didn't throw enough punches. Hey, Steve. Yes. I'm in shape, man. I worked my ass off for this camp, and I will put on a show January 19th. Okay. Are you predicting a knockout or a decision? If, if the knockout presents itself, I'm... Right now, they throwing the book at me. <laughs> but right now, I'm I'm so in shape. I'm so in shape. I feel so good. If it was a rainstorm and I ran in it, I'd come in dry. <laughs> Adrian Broder, good luck Saturday night. I will be watching. I can promise you that. Thanks a lot, bro. All right, thank you. We'll talk. Adrian Broner challenging Manny Pacquiao for the WBA crown. Right here with Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News, 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Look.
we can't excuse everything that we've heard and seen from Adrian Broner. And again, he was running on his treadmill and all that stuff. He said he wasn't going to answer any questions because it was face to face. He's like, if it was Floyd there, you'd have been there. Actually, I've only been to two Floyd fights in my career. When he fought Manny Pacquiao and when he fought Conor McGregor. Because those were events. I didn't go to him when he, I didn't go to the Floyd fight when he fought Berto. Actually, there's three fights because I did go to see him uh, against Arturo Gaddy more than a decade ago. God rest his soul. Gaddy. Because that fight was right in Atlantic City. But I didn't go see Floyd against Oscar. I didn't go see Floyd against almost against not almost anybody else. I saw three fights, Gaddy, Pacquiao, and Conor McGregor. That's it. That's it. Now, he said Mike Tyson, somebody, that would have been different. Because I love seeing Mike Tyson. But getting back to Adrian Broner, look. This guy's got a who's a, a who's what's list of of legal issues, domestic violence, aggravated robbery, weapons case against him, beat up a man over a gambling dispute, failed to appear in court one time, another time appeared in court late and drunk and got thrown in jail by the judge because of that. I mean, every way you turned. And then in 2016, admitted he contemplated suicide with a string of disturbing posts on the social media. But here's the deal. The fight game, here's what the reality is. People look at Broner and they look at him as wasted talent because he's a big-time talent that doesn't utilize all of his talents to, you know, his capabilities. He's not throwing enough punches, doesn't appear to be focused enough, not always in shape, that kind of thing. And they've lamented that. But the reality is is that if Adrian Broner was focused, his skill set that he possesses, is superior enough to most where you look at the three-time champion, the former three-time champion in three different weight classes. You look at him and you say, guess what? He could do some things. Whereas Manny Pacquiao is widely recognized as somebody who's lost a step, who isn't what he used to be, but he's still beloved. So we shall see. 888-SAY-ESPN, it's 888-729-3776. You know what never goes out of style? Surprising a special friend or loved one with 24 multicolored roses for $29.99 from 1-800-Flowers.com. To order, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. Your call is to close out the show in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio. ESPN. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I love Steve Mills. Known him for many years. Scott Perry for many years. I got a lot of faith in, in what the Knicks ultimately will do if they stay at the helm. But I got to give credit where credit is due. I cannot say enough about what the Brooklyn Nets are doing. I cannot say enough about what the Brooklyn Nets are doing. It's, it's fantastic. I don't give a damn about them being a game of two under 500. That means nothing to me. You go against the Brooklyn Nets, you are going to be in a dogfight. I want to give props to D'Angelo Russell because we all know what kind of mess he got himself in by stupidly exposing Swaggy P when he was involved with I- I- Iggy Azalea. That brother needed to be moved out to L.A. All of us said it. He has come to Brooklyn. He has been balling. This kid, Allen, will block anything. He'll block a burger if you throw it in his face. He don't give a damn. He's trying to swat everything. Didn't Whitty can ball. I like him a lot. I I love what I'm seeing from the Brooklyn Nets. I'm sorry. I'm a lifelong Knicks fan. Native New Yorker. Born in the Bronx. Raised in Hollis, Queens, New York City. All my life. I wasn't wasn't sitting there looking for the Brooklyn Nets. But I'll be damned if I rob them of credit. I am incredibly impressed with what I am seeing from the Brooklyn Nets. This was a team that was supposed to stink every bit as much as the Knicks. Until this summer's free agency, where you got cap space, not just for one, but maybe two marquee dudes. And everybody been talking about the Knicks, 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 because the Knicks are supposed to have $38 million in cap space. Let me tell you something. Do not be surprised if a marquee dude decides to go to Brooklyn. They're building something there. They're building something there. The hell with the rest of the NBA. The Knicks got a problem right here in New York with the Brooklyn Nets. The 
the Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. And you can always get in touch with the show through the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed. If you missed any of the show today, you can go and check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Podcast. Brought to you by the new Capital One Saver card. Earn 4% cash back on dining and entertainment, 2% at grocery stores, and 1% on all other purchases. Hey, hey! What's in your wallet? <laughs> I always was envious of Samuel L. Jackson with those Capital One commercials. I always had to imagine myself, hey, what's in your wallet? Kind of like that. Back to the phones we go. It at 8 say ESPN. Let's go to Jordan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Jordan? Hey, what's up? Uh, good afternoon to you. I got a comment on Kyrie Irving. Go ahead. We haven't uh, dug that into the ground. So I know he's apologized to Braun, but uh, after going from Cleveland to Boston, even though the Celtics are in a better spot than what Cleveland is now, uh, two-part question. Do you feel he's having second thoughts on how things are turning out with injuries, young talent, uh, visible frustration on the court? No, I think, I, think his second, I think his second thought was in, in regards to how unreceptive he was to what LeBron James was trying to do. And now that he's faced with a similar challenge and he's got guys griping at him the way he may have felt he was griping at LeBron, he's a bit more sensitive and understanding of what LeBron had to endure. I think that he was being honest about that. Yeah, especially with him uh, only being, you know, an average of three years older than uh, a lot of the people on the the team. Uh, Second part to that was – do you feel uh, behind closed doors that he's won over Boston? And do you feel he's won over that team? I mean, that's a much well, bigger Boston, market. Boston, Boston loves him, no question about it. But also understand why. If Boston didn't have him, they probably would have kept Isaiah Thomas. And you would have gave Isaiah Thomas, who's now making $2 million a year, uh, $2 million rather, for this one-year deal in Denver. You would have given Isaiah Thomas, what, $150 million minimum? Max so I mean, they 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 they're, they're kind of relieved, and that's okay, not to I, knock that's not to knock Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas last time he was healthy he was averaging twenty eight point nine a game. The problem is is that Ty, Ty Isaiah Thomas hasn't been healthy over the last couple of seasons. That's been his challenge. Huge Cleveland fan, and uh, I've been following them for a long time. Right. I just I, I, I got it. Like, uh, I, I got it. I got it. I'm 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 on a I'm on a tight spot. You know, you're giving me sentimental feelings. I got it, but I gotta go. Appreciate it, Marshall. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, how's it going? Thanks I'm for taking right. the call. Go ahead, man. Um, why do you think Dwayne Haskins is projected to go earlier in the draft than Kyler Murray, despite him being the highest? Bigger, move? bigger, and Dwayne Haskins is a baller and a lead in Ohio State. Uh, with the kind of things that he can do, um, the versatility. They say he can make professional throws. He can run with the football. Uh, he's got better size on him as well, and he comes from an elite program. I think that's the reason why. I got to run. I got to appreciate it. Troy, real quick, you got 30 seconds. Go. Yes, I'm Troy Yarbrough. I just want to say about the Pacquiao fight. I mean, Broder, you're from the Midwest, but when you called him Madonna, you got beat up. You're not a champion. You got to do your thing. Make sure you handle your thing when you go in there and fight Pacquiao. He's left-handed like me. You're going to get knocked out. Pacquiao beat his ass. Hold on, hold on, real quick, real quick, because I got to run. You're predicting that Pacquiao is going to knock out Broner? Is that what you're predicting? Predicting? I'm predicting Pacquiao. All right, I got you. You're predicting that Pacquiao is going to knock out Broner. I understand. I got it. Got to get on out of here. Thank you all for joining the show today. Talked about Kyrie and LeBron. Talked about NBA. Interviewed Adrian and Broner, et cetera, et cetera. But I'll be back in 22 hours. Until then, peace and love, everybody. Stephen A. Signing off. Jerry Jones says there's some coaching candidate opportunities that could come up in the next week or two. 